that is to Norway, Oslo in fact. Um, we just we just landed. It's really cold and it's got snow, which is cool. And the reason we've got a plane and a train, well we're gonna visit a man, a boy, who we shall call for the moment Bob. So I'm currently wandering the streets of Oslo. Um, apparently I've got to get a bus to somewhere. It's all worth it for my man, Bob. Um, yeah, hopefully we don't die of frostbite between now and finding him. Two hours later. Okay, so the wandering seems to have paid off with a little bit of help from our friends at Google. Now just to find Bob. Good morning, good morning everybody. How are we all doing? I stopped filming last night because the lens was so cold that it just kept misting up. But we just chilled, we had some food, and then slept a lot because I was, I was very tired. Um, we're currently looking at my bed slash workstation this morning, which is the sofa. Ulrich is out coaching at the moment. I'm doing some online client programs, um, and then we're gonna train later on this evening. Um, Ulrich sessions are like four hours long and like a million sets, so I'm probably gonna die. But for the moment, it's a pretty quiet morning. I'm gonna continue with some work and I'll catch up for you guys in a second. And this is the main reason that I've come over to Norway. Look at this lovely chap. Ulrich and I are hosting a series of workshops over North America. Currently, three locations will be Washington DC at Physicality, Denver at Awaken, and the third one will be San Diego or LA just looking to confirm over a couple of gyms at the moment. Similar to our London workshop we did, isn't it? Yep, just much better. We got really good feedback at the London workshop. It went down really, really well. Um, we just wanted to change a few things and we've made stuff better and we're just looking forward to putting it together. So now Auric is gonna put me through my paces <laughs> and I'm gonna go die at some training session. A bit awesome. Cool. Let's go. I, I put it on into I'm a couple of times. This, this little smart car. This is the vehicle of choice for the 190 centimeter Ulrich. Oh yes. Car is literally all door. It's impossible to start training without a coffee. Do you have a train legs? Uh, I include it somehow in my uh, flexibility work. <laughs> so you, do, do like... you do middle split squats? Yeah, <laughs> and, and front split squats as well. And uh, actually I've seen, I've seen that I've gained some hypertrophy in the hip area. <laughs> it's strange. Got the swell hip flexors. But I always had an easy time to gain muscle, so it's like, I just move some new stuff. Steroids. <laughs> It's gonna be a cane session today. We're going to include cane as a little part of uh, some pictures. <laughs> So guys, I thought what would be a cool thing for this particular hands-on session is to kind of go a little bit more into detail about why Ulrich and myself are doing some of the things that we're doing in the session. So you get a little bit more insight than just watching Ulrich do some very good one-arm handstands and me just being solidly average at doing them. <laughs> uh, I thought I'd start with some warm-up clips simply because um, you have a particularly long walk. Do you want to explain to people like what you do in your warm-up, what you're trying to do, why you do it? Yeah, I'm trying both to increase my flexibility and warm it up. And uh, it's not just physical, it's mental as well. Uh, this makes me feel ready to do uh, a hands-up. Uh, and since I've never been really flexible, I'm also trying to increase it all the time as well. So I'm trying to open up my hips, uh, my back, uh, my everything actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean as well, like you need straddle flexibility. If you're doing one arms and, and stuff like that, so you, straddle, you need the widest straddle you can, so having yeah. that available to you and always trying to increase it as well. Uh, I have uh, operated the left hip and that's really tight. So I'm, I'm doing specific drills to try to focus on that. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, possible to make it better, but I'm trying my best. 
Yeah, one of the drills we actually did was a distraction that was quite helpful, kind of pulling it back into the socket. But you can see yeah. like visibly when you're in like your middle splits wants to go full but that like one hip is blocking it. Yeah. Um, I'm personally just doing some flossing for my elbow because I've got the tendency to be a bit anterior dominant on my shoulders, which means that I kind of want to use them more. Um, so my bicep tends to take more of a hit. So if I do some flossing first, it kind of reduces that and, and helps my shoulders feel better. I use tuck head in work. Probably like you haven't seen me do a handstand for ages and you like commented on the fact that my yeah. shoulders looked much more open yeah, just simply because of doing tuck work. Mm. which I think was probably the, one of the biggest takeaways that I did from uh, or learned from doing you. And then one thing I really wanted to get to work with you was more pike. It's something I'm working on a lot at the moment. That's like you do so easily. Yeah, pike is just the same as tuck, just more. It takes more uh, power, basically. Probably one thing that's worth mentioning is the fact that like you're spotting me and I also helped you a spot. Like mm. spotting of handstand is, is the same as like maybe taking off some weight in a bench press so you can perfect form a bit and get some reference. Yeah, but it's more complex as well since we're actually talking about balancing. Yeah. So, so it kind of gives the, the person who's doing the balance um, security, feeling safe, so we are able to kind of really focus on the push and the positioning. So when I'm getting spotted here, I'm really just able to focus on pushing hard on my left shoulder because the left is my weak shoulder. So then uh, it, it's a really good warm up to get spotted in the correct position so I don't, uh, for example, rotate or I'm insecure in my push. So I'm trying to find balance instead of pushing harder. I feel like it's almost like taking your training and, and putting it on a little bit of steroids or light speed or something like it helps speed up the process because you just get that more fine-tuned feedback and longer time in a position because somebody yeah. can spot you into it. Yeah, and it works really good for warm-up and uh, endurance as well. Yeah, for sure. And then you're just doing some straight work as well just to, just to, to show who's boss. Uh, yeah, but with straight work is really good because you don't get away with, the, uh, with rotation in straight work. So if you're rotating a lot in, in straight, you will fall straight down. That's why it's also a good uh, thing to do sometimes before working the straddle, even though the straddle is much easier. Yeah. So, so it kind of works in, in the preparation work for uh, longer balances. Uh, I just want to touch on, so you're doing some canes work at the moment, um, which I was pretty excited. I've only done canes once, but um, could you maybe explain like yeah. the difference between canes, blocks, floor? The canes are basically much easier because every time you see my hand is moving on the cane, that's me rebalancing. When I'm on the floor or on a block, I have to do that rebalancing through my whole body. But on the canes, you get a really much faster adjustment time. So instead of me moving my whole body to adjust uh, balancing, I can just do a little bit of movement like this on the cane and then I will find the balance again. So uh, canes are actually between 15 and 25% easier than the floor because you, you're doing the adjustments really much faster. It demands less strength of your um, your wrists and your hand. Yeah, it, it was kind of funny to watch. Is it, I mean, I found it a little bit harder just because I guess it's a new stimulus, but yeah, I can see why it would be easier. Um, here's some, just some more spotting work. I'm currently working a lot on flag at the moment, um, which is nowhere near as good as it needs to be. But again, it was just useful to have Oryx as a spot just for like reference, making sure I'm not twisting, yeah. giving a little bit more time under tension. And then you can focus on the push instead of focusing on the balancing. Yeah. It's kind of, but it's very different still on the wall. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, so I guess next step to be the easiest one would be blocks. Uh, and you recommended to me that I should spend more time on blocks because yeah. I was quite finger heavy with bars balancing. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you want to be pushing mainly through your mm. palms when you're balancing. Basically, if you think blocks is hard, it's because you're used to balancing too much towards the uh, finger part. The blocks uh, on one arm is easier because you get more grip. Uh, so if you think the blocks are hard, it, it means that you're, you, you are too much on your fingers. Get your weight down here and it will be better at balance, in every, both uh, for two arms and one arm. And yeah, here's just a clip of Ulrich showing you how you should flag, <laughs> rather than like my yeah, tiny right, right arm is good, the left arm is horrible. Yeah. But then I get the advantages of the blog as, bl blocks as well, because I I really get to grip and that makes me be able to do more adjustments before I fall. So for people who are using a block like you, I mean, when I came, I used to put three fingers in front. You said that you prefer having two and like properly gripping the block. I think that most people prefer two and some people prefer uh, three. Okay. Mm. That's preference based. Yeah, for yeah. sure. No, I definitely, I, that's one thing I noticed. I kept falling over a lot, like uh, in overbalance, like falling back over onto my, like not away from, away from my feet. Mm. Um, so we're just jumping on and doing a lot more block work. 
I mean, yours was yeah. going to be better, but it definitely like it forces you to to be here, not here. Yeah, we were filming. So this is uh, uh, the day after the session was done, and an in stay session, like my balance actually just felt a whole lot better, mm. just from like a little bit of work yesterday, oh, yeah, focusing yeah, about pushing more through the palms. Mm. Yeah, so I, mean, I think after just after those last couple of days, I've like had two four hour sessions. Like, yes, I feel pretty beaten up at the moment. Like, I definitely mm. just need to go to sleep. But um, I think I'm gonna try to, to dedicate as much time as I can. I think I haven't been dedicating enough time to it. Hopefully, I can get my hands signed up to game for when we go for workshop sessions in uh, awesome. America. That's the plan, anyway. Yeah, but yeah. So that is basically the end now. Auric and I are just about to wrap this up with a game of chess because we're civilized. Yep. <laughs> pretty suit accent and everything. <laughs> See your best British accent. Uh, oh no, I don't, ha I don't have one this Say, I would like, I would love a cup of tea, thank you. I would love a cup of tea, thank you. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> right, guys, I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. We are doing a pretty epic training session tomorrow with some Norwegian beasts. That will probably be the next vlog, so make sure you stay checked out for that. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and let me know. If also in the comments down below, you can leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the episode if you have any questions for Ulrich or anything else. But that is the end of this vlog. I'll catch you in the next episode. Have a strong week. Peace. Yeah.